Hello, AP Stats. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, today we're moving on to the second section of 5.2, um, which is uh, the practice of statistics, fourth edition, chapter 5, section 2, second day. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, Venn diagrams, which hopefully also will kind of be a review for you. Um, I think you've seen them before in the past, probably not analyzed them as much as probably we will. Um, and then we're also going to look at a couple different um, probability rules. Uh, yeah, so that's cool. Um, okay, so uh, before we had um, a, a general addition rule for two events, um, that was in 5.2. Uh, that was only for mutually exclusive events. Um, and so there is uh, a similar rule, but only for, uh, but for any, any two events. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. Um, and so uh, it's pretty simple. Um, basically, the probability of A or B um, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B occurring at the same time. Um, if they are mutually exclusive, this last piece here equals zero. Okay, that happens if they're mutually exclusive because they have nothing in common, which is why the addition rule for mutually exclusive events is just the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay, here it is written out a little nicer. Um, so the, the two bullet points, those are exactly the same formula, um, but they're just written a little bit differently. So one is in words, right? You've got the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Um, but this is like probability notation, this last one. So you should know that um, the probability of A and then that cup is, means or. And then the cap, which is, uh, it kind of looks like an N, um, is and. The way I remember that is that and has an N in it, and so the and looks like an N. Hopefully that helps. Um, and then, you know, note that if A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A and B is equal to zero. So you end up with just the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay, let's try some examples. So we've got some data collected from a mock election uh, for the 2016 election at our school. Um, and uh, what we found is that uh, among middle schoolers, 77 were uh, Clinton supporters, 23 were Trump supporters, and 16 were third party supporters, and then in the high school we had 84, 36, and 10 respectively. Um, and so this is called a two-way table. We've already talked about what a two-way table is in the past um, when we talked about conditional and marginal distributions. Remember that stuff? Um, so we're going to kind of be using it uh, just to find probability of things um, instead. So uh, say, for example, um, we choose a student at random at the school. We want to know what's the probability that student is a Trump supporter. Um, and so what you want to do is you first you want to kind of find your total. So go ahead, find all the total values for each of the columns and for the rows, because that'll help you in the long run. OK, so there are all the totals. Um, and then the next couple questions are, you know, you're going to use the table for. So uh, what's the probability a student is a Trump supporter? Um, so we would take all of the possible Trump supporters. That's 59 people. Um, so 50, if I were to randomly select somebody, the chances that I would pick somebody as a uh, Trump supporter would be 59 out of the grand total of 246, right? Because I didn't say that I'm picking a middle schooler or something. I'm saying I'm just picking any student. Um, this is going to be 59 out of 246, okay? And then you can change that to a percent if you want. Um, question two, what's the probability that, uh, that the student is a high schooler and a third party supporter? Okay, so for this one, um, you want to look at the probability that, that the student is a high schooler. Okay, so we're looking at this particular uh, row here. But we're looking for a high schooler and a third party supporter. So that's this 10 people here are members of high school group 
and also third party group. Okay, so we have 10 out of 246, which would be our probability for that one. So 10 out of 246. Okay, last question. What's the probability a student is a Clinton supporter or middle schooler? Okay, so what you want to do for that one is you want to go back. So Clinton supporter or middle schooler. So we want to go to our diagram. And we know we have 161 Clinton supporters. And we also have um, middle school, we have 116 middle schoolers. Okay? Um, and so if we want to find the, the probability of us selecting a Clinton supporter, that would be 161 um, out of 246. And then a uh, middle schooler would be 116 out of 246. But the problem is, We've actually counted the 77 middle schoolers who are Clinton supporters. We've, we've counted them twice because that's your and, right? That's the Clinton supporter and middle schooler. So you don't want to count them twice. So what you want to do is remember that formula from before, right? The probability that that's a Clinton supporter or a middle schooler, um, Clinton, or middle schooler is equal to the probability of a Clinton supporter plus the probability of a middle schooler minus the probability that they happen at the same time, right? That's that formula from up here. Okay, so we go back down. Clin probability of a Clinton supporter is uh, 161 out of 246 plus the probability of a middle, middle schooler, which is 116 out of 246. And then we want to subtract out the probability that they're both a middle schooler and a Clinton supporter, so that's 77 out of 246. So then you just um, add those up and get your final answer, 200 out of 246. You would get that also the same way if you just took um, your... 84 plus 77 plus 23 plus 16 and added them up. You get the same same value. Okay, so Venn diagrams. Uh, hopefully this will be a quick, nice refresher for you. Um, but, you know, the Venn diagram is that thing, you know, where you have like two circles and they overlap and then there's like the universe where the two circles exist and, you know, it's inside the circle, it's a part of, you know. Okay, so hopefully you've kind of like seen these before. But um, for our Venn diagram for this particular set of data, we want to have like a universe that is um, all of the people within the school. So everyone in that box is going to be someone from school, a middle schooler or upper, upper schooler, or high schooler. Okay, um, and then we have a couple different situations, right? We've got Clinton supporters, we've got Trump supporters, we've got third party supporters, and then we also have um, your uh, middle school and your high school folks. So we need to figure out a way to represent each of those and the fact that like some of them are going to overlap. Um, within a Venn diagram. Okay, so I made a Venn diagram um, with three different uh, circles. Um, and how to choose these, um, I'm sure is probably a question you're trying to ask. So um, I, the way I decided to do Clinton, a Clinton circle, a Trump circle, and a high school circle is that um, I need to know that like anything outside of the high school circle, so like this whole area here, right? All of that's going to represent my middle schooler. So I have high school and middle within my diagram. Okay, so step one, I mean, you really need to just make sure that you're accounting for everybody. Then, then in my Clinton circle, I can include anybody who voted for Clinton. Um, and then outside of the Clinton circle is anyone who did not vote for Clinton. Okay, but some of those people voted for Trump. So I made this circle be the Trump circle. Anything outside of that would be people who didn't vote for Trump. Um, and then, so if I have a Clinton circle and a Trump circle and a high school circle, then the outside area is going to be my middle school 
third party um, third party supporters. Okay, so we can just fill in uh, the info. Um, so the Clinton supporters. Let's go through those first. So um, in here, right, this area um, is going to be all of my Clinton supporters that are not in high school, right? Because it's not an overlap between the high school. So my area here is the set of all people who are middle schooler uh, Clinton supporters, okay? Then in this red section right here, which is the outside portion of the Trump circle, that's gonna be um, all of my Trump supporters who are not in high school. So um, the number of people who support Trump who are in middle school, uh, which is 23. So we'll put our 23 in there. Now, we're not gonna have any overlap between Clinton and Trump, so um, there's gonna be a zero there and a zero there, because you're not gonna have any Clinton supporters who are also Trump supporters. That's okay, you can have zeros. Um, I can fill in my Clinton high school supporters, so that's gonna be this section right here that I just filled in. That's all of my um, high school Clinton supporters. So um, that is 84 people, okay. Um, and then my high school non-Clinton, non-Trump supporters are the people that are in this uh, chunk right here, this purple chunk that I just colored, okay. Those are all my high schoolers who don't support Clinton or Trump, so those are gonna be my third party uh, people from high school. And there are 10 of those. And then I also have my Trump supporters in high school. Um, and again, if you look back at your data, Trump supporters in high school, um, we had 36 of those. And then the only thing um, I have left is the set of all people in middle school who didn't vote for Clinton or Trump. Um, and that would be all of my middle school third party supporters. There are 16 of those. So there's 16 people in this like outside area okay so all of that should add up to the total number of people who voted um, all of the people within the Clinton circle should be your total people who voted for Clinton um, you should have in your Trump red circle you should have all the people who voted for Trump and all of the numbers in the high school circle should add up to all the high schoolers um, and then all of the things that are not in the high school so that would be 77 and 23 and 16, those should all add up to your middle schoolers. And that is it for the Venn diagram. Um, okay, so we have a couple examples. So uh, this is number one. So go ahead, try that problem before I go over it. Okay, so here's our two-way table that displays the sample space. So um, our options are you can get a face card or not a face card. And you can get a heart or not a heart. Um, and so here are all your possible combinations. So you can get, um, there are three different face cards that are hearts. There are nine cards that are face cards but not hearts. So those are your um, Jack, Queen, King of Club, Spades, and Diamonds. Um, and then you have 10 no face card hearts and then 30 no face card and not a heart. Um, so the probability of A and B happening at the same time is the probability of face card and a heart happening at the same time, which is that 3 out of 52 cards. So question 3 says explain why A probability of A or B does not equal the probability of A plus probability of B. Um, that's because they're not mutually exclusive, so they do have things, um, they do have outcomes in common, that's that face card and heart. Um, so in... In, because you can have it be a face card and a heart at the same time. So um, using the general addition rule to find the probability of A or B uh, is probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay, so it should be 22 out of 52. Um, last problem is kind of a fun problem about a gecko. Um, so I would say go ahead, try this on your own. I highly recommend using a Venn diagram uh, and check your answers in a second. And here's your Venn diagram. Um, and the answer to the question is how many were tailless and chewed on but not gray? The answer is three. All right, that's it. Have a good day. Bye.